Corn futures continuing to pull back, facing further selling pressure to start the week. Now, at their lowest levels since November of 2020. Agnes Michelle Rook, let us know if better news is on the horizon in markets now. Well, a down day in grain and livestock futures trade on Monday. Brian Grady with Pro Farmer is back with analysis. Well, the grain trade, let's talk about that first. It felt like a risk off day. Some of that coming from weather and some of these rains in the eastern Corn Belt, Brian. Yeah, just a complete washout, Michelle. Uh, so we had fundamental factors, the rains that you mentioned. Uh, uh, some of the drier areas in the southern and eastern Corn Belt got some decent rains last week. And then remnants of Hurricane Burl uh, are expected to bring more this week. And, and so uh, that's a, a negative factor. Um, generally mild conditions uh, from a temperature perspective. Uh, we will see some heat build later in the week and, and into next week, but uh, nothing excessive by any means. And, and so the traders are looking at it as, as generally favorable conditions uh, moving forward. You throw in pretty broad-based selling across the commodity sector today and uh, technical sell-off and, and uh, it just turned into a real ugly start to the week. And very disheartening in the grains, considering we had some bullish weekly key reversals the last week in the grains. Historically, the day after, right after the 4th of July, um, typically either accelerates the current trend or reverses it. And, and last Friday's price action suggested that maybe we would reverse out of it. But, but uh, Monday's trade definitely um, you know, wiped all of that out and then some. No doubt. Plus, you have the report coming up on Friday and USDA obviously has to reconcile some of the numbers we got out of quarterly stocks and acreage, right? That's a concern? Yeah. So June 1 stocks uh, were bigger than expected. Uh, so that'll go into the old crop balance sheets for corn and soybeans, especially for corn there. And then uh, when you look at the new crop balance sheets, we'll get the June acreage figures. Uh, so that'll be up for corn as well. So we're going to see corn ending stocks build both on the old crop balance sheet and the new crop balance sheet. No doubt. And then we also saw cattle market lower, despite the fact that we had some record cash trade. So why did futures not follow, Brian? Well, uh, so the, the futures that did trade to the upside early on, but boy, once the buyer interest dried up uh, and turned lower, uh, then we saw those outside market influences that broad base sell off across the commodities really kick in and, and cattle futures turned in an ugly performance. Thanks so much for joining us. Brian Grady with Pro Farmer. We'll have more updates coming up. Watch Markets Now with Michelle Rook on the Farm Journal YouTube channel, keeping you updated throughout the day on the markets at the open midday and close. Find out what moved the markets today and what to expect the market to do next.